Hello Newtonians. In this video, we will talk about the basics of the one-dimensional tolerance analysis and tolerance stackup and how to convert tolerances. We will show you two methods that we can use for the tolerance stackup analysis, worst case tolerance analysis and statistical tolerance analysis. In this video, we will not consider geometrical product specification, ASME standard name, geometric dimensioning and tolerancing, GDNT. Instead, this topic will be addressed separately. The easiest way to define tolerances is to add them randomly to the drawing because we know how to do it in our CAD software, send it to our manufacturer, and hope that our parts will fit. But, on the other hand, there is also an expensive way, we call our supplier and ask the tightest tolerances they can achieve and then define them on the drawing. But this would cost us an arm and a leg to manufacture. The proper way of defining the tolerances is to understand which dimensions are functional and which are not, how our dimensioning technique is adding up to the accumulation of the tolerances, which of our individual tolerances are influencing the most our accumulated tolerances, which of the tolerances we can make larger and which of them we must make tighter. This approach will give us the best ratio between quality and price. The quality of our products is always imperative, and we are always trying to achieve the highest product quality. However, suppose we cannot deliver the product to our customers at a reasonable price. In that case, even the best product will die on the market because we could not get our manufacturing price under control. This effect is visible when you have more than one part in your product. For example, imagine that you have 50 different parts 2 to 5% more expensive only because of overdefined tolerances on your drawings. Then you specified unnecessary surface finishes on these parts, coatings, etc. Further down the line, you have an assembly process that you have not adequately defined and 5 minutes longer assembly time, etc. In the end, you end up with the overly expensive product that your competitors are selling for half of the price and the same level of quality. With this approach, you would end up out of business pretty soon. Always have your customers in mind and put yourself in their shoes. You also would not pay for the same product double price if you have the alternative to buy it less expensive for the same level of quality. In the context of price, as a mechanical design engineer, you can influence the overall cost and the quality of the product, starting with a single component. You can choose different materials, different manufacturing processes, different surface finishes, different tolerances, etc. This video will focus on tolerances and how to analyze one-dimensional tolerances to achieve the optimal quality and manufacturing price. Tolerance Analysis the first step of the tolerance analysis is to clearly understand the tolerances defined on the drawing and prepare them in the format usable in tolerance stackup analysis. The second step is performing stackup analysis. The term tolerance analysis encompasses both these steps. In the first step, we will analyze all of the tolerances defined on the drawing and understand the mutual connection between different dimensions and tolerances. For example, if we have an assembly, we will investigate the assembly procedure and the relationship between the different parts. After correctly understanding the various connections between the parts, we will select the distance, gap or interference we want to analyze. The next thing that we will do is prepare the tolerances in the format that is usable in tolerance stackup analysis, converting all of the tolerances into equal bilateral tolerancing. Tolerance Stackup the tolerance stackup is a tool that allows us to understand the cumulative effect of multiple tolerances. Usually, we analyze the distance or clearance between the features, or parts, that are not dimensioned. The result of the tolerance stackup represents a nominal clearance or interference. With the use of the tolerance stackup, we are getting the numerical answer for the questions like Will the shaft fit into the bearing? Will the pin fit within the hole? If we assemble these components on top of each other, will there be interference with the housing? Can we fit two plates in the groove? What is the worst case biggest length of the plate? Etc. With the results obtained from the tolerance stackup, we can determine if a change must be made on the part, or assembly, geometry, dimensions, and or tolerances. We can also use the stackup analysis to optimize the tolerances on our drawing and save manufacturing costs. Tolerance analysis working steps. Defining the distance to calculate. Let us investigate the example of the simple shaft drawing, simplified for the sake of the lesson. We have five different dimensions defined with different tolerances. We can easily calculate for five dimension features expected manufacturing dimensions. However, we are interested in calculating the manufacturable nominal value and the tolerance of non-dimension features. Now when we know what distance we want to calculate, 
we will mark one end with the letter A and the other end with the letter B. Tolerance Conversion Before we start converting different tolerances into equal bilateral tolerancing for more straightforward navigation through the dimensions, we will define the number to each one of them. We can see that we have a few different types of tolerances defined on the drawing. Previously we said that in order to perform the stack-up analysis, we need to convert all tolerances to equal bilateral tolerances. Conversion of the negative unilateral tolerance to equal bilateral tolerance. The dimension number one is defined as negative unilateral tolerance. First thing that we need to do is to calculate upper ULS and lower LLS limit of size. ULS equals 37.2 plus 0 is equal to 37.2. LLS equals 37.2 minus 0 0.5 is equal to 36.7. The next step is to determine the tolerance value. T equals 37.2 minus 36.7 is equal to 0 0.5. And our equal bilateral tolerance value is T divided with 2 is equal to 0 0.5 divided with 2 is equal to 0 0.25. So tolerance is plus or minus 0.25 millimeters. The last step is to adjust the nominal value of the dimension. N equals LLS plus T divided with 2 is equal to 36.7 plus 0.25 is equal to 36.95. In this case our adjusted equal bilateral tolerance is 36.95 plus or minus 0.25 millimeters. General tolerance. Dimension number 2 has no visible defined tolerance but that does not mean there is no tolerance value defined. Usually, the standard for general tolerances is defined in the title block of the drawing. Most often, it is stated as ISO 2768, MK. Please do not make this mistake and forget about the general tolerances. If we look up in the ISO 2768 tolerance table, equal bilateral tolerance for dimension number 2 is 10 plus or minus 0.2 millimeters. Conversion of the unequal bilateral tolerance to equal bilateral tolerance. Dimension number three is defined as unequal bilateral tolerance. The first thing that we need to do is to calculate the upper ULS and lower LLS limit of size. ULS equals 100 plus 1 is equal to 101. LLS equals 100 minus 2 is equal to 98. The next step is to determine the tolerance value. T equals 101 minus 98 is equal to 3. And our equal bilateral tolerance value is T divided with 2 is equal to 3 divided with 2 is equal to 1.5. So tolerance is plus or minus 1.5. The last step is to adjust the nominal value of the dimension. N equals LLS plus T divided with 2 is equal to 98 plus 1.5 is equal to 99.5. In this case, our adjusted equal bilateral tolerance is 99.5 plus or minus 1.5 millimeters. Conversion of limit dimensions to equal bilateral tolerance. Dimension number 4 is defined as the limit dimension. In this case, the upper ULS and lower LLS limits of size are already calculated. ULS equals 11. LLS equals 9. The next step is to determine the tolerance value. T equals 11 minus 9 is equal to 2. And our equal bilateral tolerance value is T divided with 2 is equal to 2 divided with 2 is equal to 1. So tolerance is plus or minus 1. The last step is to adjust the nominal value of the dimension. N equals LLS plus T divided with 2 is equal to 9 plus 1 is equal to 10. In this case, our adjusted equal bilateral tolerance is 10 plus or minus 1 millimeter. Conversion of the positive unilateral tolerance to equal bilateral tolerance. Dimension number 5 is defined as positive unilateral tolerance. First thing that we need to do is to calculate upper ULS and lower LLS limit of size. ULS equals 23.2 plus 1 is equal to 24.2. LLS equals 23.2 minus 0 is equal to 23.2. The next step is to determine the tolerance value. T equals 24.2 minus 23.2 is equal to 1. And our equal bilateral tolerance value is T divided with 2 is equal to 1 divided with 2 is equal to 0 0.5. So tolerance is plus or minus 0 0.5. The last step is to adjust the nominal value of the dimension. N equals LLS plus T divided with 2 is equal to 23.2 plus 0 0.5 is equal to 23.7. 
in this case our adjusted equal bilateral tolerance is 23.7 plus or minus 0.5 millimeters. Typically we would not change the defined tolerances on the drawing into the equal bilateral tolerances. This is only done to make the stack-up analysis easier. Dimensions and tolerances on the drawing will stay the same, and you will adjust them based on the tolerance stack-up results. Determining a positive or a negative dimension direction. The last step before we can move to the tolerance stack-up is to define a positive or a negative dimension direction. This step is essential because it will help us determine which dimensions need to be added together and which ones need to be subtracted to get the correct value of the missing gap or interference. As we already stated, we are interested in the missing distance A to B. To define the dimension direction, we will define the origin of each dimension in a counterclockwise direction starting from point A and finishing in point B. Each dimension's origin is on the end of the previous dimension. Dimension number 1 will have origin in point A. Dimension number 2 will have origin on the end of dimension 1, etc. The next step is to define the positive and the negative direction. The positive direction will be in the direction from point A to point B. The final step is to define which dimension is in a positive direction and which one is in a negative direction. If the arrow on the dimension is pointing in the direction A to B then the dimension is marked with the plus sign. If the arrow on the dimension is pointing in the opposite direction then the A to B direction that the dimension is marked with the minus sign. After we analyze the tolerances on the drawing and define the directions, we are ready to move on to the tolerance stack-up analysis. Worst case tolerance stack-up analysis. The worst case tolerance stack-up analysis is used to determine the gap variation or interference with the assumption that all dimensions will be manufactured at their maximum or minimum limit, upper or lower limit of size. In the table we will write the values of the dimensions with the positive and the negative values together with the corresponding tolerances. The nominal distance value equals the sum of the positive direction dimensions subtracted from the sum of the negative direction dimension. Tolerance, however, is the sum of all tolerances. The missing distance dimension is 18.85 plus or minus 3.45 millimeters. Statistical Tolerance Stack-Up Analysis The statistical tolerance stack-up analysis is used to determine the gap variation or interference with the assumption that not all dimensions will be manufactured at their maximum or minimum limit. The dimensions will likely approximate the normal distribution. Most of the dimensions will be closer to their nominal value than either extreme. We will use RSS, root sum square, method. When tolerances are calculated with the RSS method, in 99.7% of cases, the manufactured tolerances will be inside this range. Generally, the statistically calculated tolerances will have smaller values than tolerances calculated with the worst case tolerance stack up. In case that we want to have a slightly more conservative approach, the RSS can be multiplied by the adjustment factor. We will use the adjustment factor of 1.5. RSS tolerance can be calculated with the following formula. RSS tolerance equals square root sum 1i equals 1 to n times tn squared. Where, tn represents tolerances in the stack-up analysis. In plain words, the RSS tolerance is equal to the square root of the sum of all squared tolerances in stack-up analysis. Let us look into the example. The starting point for the statistical tolerance stack-up analysis is the same as for the worst-case tolerance stack-up. The only difference is that we additionally need to calculate the squared tolerances for each dimension, add them and calculate the RSS tolerance. The missing distance dimension is 18.85 plus or minus 3.06 millimeters. Comparison between the worst case and statistical tolerance stack-up analysis. Our stack-up analysis showed us that for worst case stack-up, the missing distance dimension is 18.85 plus or minus 3.45 millimeters. Statistical stack up, the missing distance dimension is 18.85 plus or minus 3.06 millimeters. We can see that the statistical stack up calculated tolerance is lower than the worst case stack up calculated tolerance, even with the adjusting factor. But what this means to us? This means that we can actually loosen up tolerances on some dimensions. For example, if we would change dimension number 3 from 99.5 plus or minus 1.5 millimeters to 99.5 plus or minus 1.8 millimeters, we would get the RSS tolerance plus or minus 3.4. This means that in a 99.7% manufacturing dimension of the missing distance will be 18.85 plus or minus 3.4 millimeters. 
From this point of view, we would get almost the exact manufacture dimensions as we previously had with the worst case stack up, but we would have looser tolerances in this case. Looser tolerances mean that your supplier has a larger room for error, which results in a lower manufacturing price. I would suggest that in your calculations, you use both methods. This will only add a few additional fields to your calculation sheet, but it will give you better insight into the overall tolerances. Now you have an excellent overview of one-dimensional tolerance analysis and tolerance stackup. Make sure to check the description below for the link and download tolerance stackup report completely for free. In the second part video, you can learn more about the influence of the dimensioning techniques on tolerance stackup and how to create your own tolerance stackup report form. Did you learn anything new in this video? Let us know in the comments below. Do you like our videos? Then, give us a thumb up, comment, and share it with your friends, colleagues, and on your social media channels. And if you want to become a part of the Newtonians, make sure to subscribe to our channel.